If you didn't see my last video, I, yeah, bleh, bleh. his sexual identity, bleh. the song. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't seen me before, my name is Heather. If you have seen me before, then you already know that my name is Heather, so welcome back. If you didn't see my last video, yes, I am back home for the summer, so this is the new filming setup for the next few months. Just PSA, I guess. Anyways, for this week's video, I am going to be giving you all 10 LGBTQ plus book suggestions because I've done two videos similar to this before. I did one about movies and TV shows, I believe, and I got a request to do books and I was like, I should do books because I love to read. I've read a few good LGBTQ plus books, so I want to pass that along to you so hopefully you can read them too. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. The first book that I'm going to suggest to you is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. This is the book that Love, Simon was based off of, and it's one of the first LGBTQ plus books that I read, and I really, really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed the movie as well. So if you've seen the movie and you haven't read the book, I would definitely recommend reading the book. I will read you the summary right now. 16-year-old and not so openly gay Simon Spear prefers to save his drama for the school musical, but when an email falls into the wrong hands, his secret is at risk of being thrust into the spotlight. Now Simon is actually being blackmailed. If he doesn't play wingman for class clown Martin, his sexual identity will become everyone's business. Worse, the privacy of Blue, the pen name of the boy he's been emailing with, will be jeopardized. With some messy dynamics emerging in his once tight-knit group of friends and his email correspondence with Blue growing more flirtatious every day, Simon's junior year has suddenly gotten all kinds of complicated. Now change of Simon has to find a way to step out of his comfort zone before he's pushed out without alienating his friends, compromising himself, or fumbling a, a shot at happiness with the most confusing, adorable guy he's ever met. Very, very good book. Very good movie. Becky Albertalli. I have a few of her books on this list because she's an incredible writer and she writes some great LGBTQ plus books, so I definitely recommend this one. The next book on the list is called Leah on the Offbeat. This is like a sequel to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda from the perspective of his friend, Leah. It's not set at the same time as the other book, but afterwards, and I really, really enjoyed this book as well. When I heard that she was going to be releasing this, I was so excited and it definitely did not disappoint. Summary says, when it comes to drumming, Leah Burke is usually on beat, but really life isn't always so rhythmic. An anomaly in her friend group, she's the only child of a young single mom and her life is decidedly less privileged. She loves to draw but is too self-conscious to show it, and even though her mom knows she's bisexual, she hasn't mustered the courage to tell her friends, not even her openly gay BFF Simon. So Leah really doesn't know what to do when her rock-solid friend group starts to fracture in unexpected ways. With prom and college on the horizon, tensions are running high. It's hard for Leah to strike the right note while the people she loves are fighting, especially when she realizes she might love one of them more than she ever intended. Becky Albertalli returns to the world of her acclaimed first novel, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, in this warm and humorous story of first love and senior year angst. Again, it's another young adult type book, but I found it very, very good, so I definitely recommend that one as well. The next book is another one by Becky Albertalli, but also by an author named Adam Silvera. They sort of did they both wrote it. Um, it is called What If It's Us, and this came out a couple of years ago. And I read this while I was on vacation before um, the pandemic hit, and it was very, very good. A nice, cute, young adult, light story. Summary says, Arthur is only in New York for the summer, but if Broadway has taught him anything, it's that the universe can deliver a show-stopping romance when you least expect it. Ben thinks the universe needs to mind its business. If the universe had his back, he wouldn't be on his way to the, po to the post office carrying a box of his ex-boyfriend's things. But when Arthur and Ben meet cute at the post office, what exactly does the universe have in store for them? Maybe nothing. After all, they get separated. Maybe everything. After all, they get reunited. But what if they can't quite nail a first date? Or a second first date? Or a third? What if Arthur tries too hard to make it work and Ben doesn't try hard enough? What if life really isn't like a Broadway show? But what if it is? Best friends Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera combine their talents in a smart, funny, and heartfelt collaboration about two very different boys who can't decide if the universe is pushing them together or pulling them apart. Like I said, very cute, very easy to read. Definitely recommend. 
The next book is one of my favorite books of all time that I've ever read, so I would definitely recommend it. It's called I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. So good. At first, Jude and her twin brother are Noah and Jude, inseparable. Noah draws constantly and is falling in love with the charismatic boy next door, while Daredevil Jude cliff dives and does all the talking for the both of them. Years later, they are barely speaking. Something has happened to change the twins in different yet equally devastating ways. But then Jude meets an intriguing, irresistible boy and a mysterious new mentor. The early years are Noah's to tell, the later years are Jude's, but they each have only half the story. And if they can find their way back to one another, they'll have a chance to remake their world. So good. Such a unique way that the story is told, half written by one perspective and half by another. I really, really enjoyed this one. The next book is one by Adam Silvera again, and it is called More Happy Than Not. This is probably my second favorite on the list. I really loved this one. The summary says, 16-year-old Aaron Soto is struggling to find happiness after a family tragedy leaves him reeling. He's slowly remembering what happiness might feel like this, this summer with the support of his girlfriend Genevieve, but it's his new best friend Thomas who really gets Aaron to open up about his past and confront his future. As Thomas and Aaron get closer, Aaron discovers things about himself that threaten to shatter his newfound contentment. A revolutionary memory alteration process, courtesy of the Lateo Institute, might be the way to straighten himself out. But what if it means forgetting who he truly is? A little bit of a mysterious description, but I would definitely recommend checking it out. I loved this book. The next book is another one by Adam Silvera, and it's called They Both Die at the End, and the description is... On September 5th, a little after midnight, Deathcast calls Mateo Torres and Rufus and Materio to give them some bad news. They're going to die today. Mateo and Rufus are total strangers, but for different reasons, they're both looking to make a new friend on their end day. The good news? There's an app for that. It's called The Last Friend. And through it, Rufus and Mateo are about to meet up for, their, for one last great adventure, to live a lifetime in a single day. The concept of this book is just so cool, and I really enjoyed reading it, even though it kind of has a dark... Um, idea behind it, but it was really, really good, so I definitely recommend. The next book is the last one that I have on the list by Becky Albertalli, and it is called the Upside of Unrequited, and the description is, 17-year-old Molly Peskin Suso knows all about unrequited love. She's lived through it 26 times. She crushes hard and crushes often, but always in secret, because no matter how many times her twin sister Cassie tells her to woman up, Molly can't stomach the idea of rejection, so she's careful. Fat girls always have to be careful. Then a cute new girl enters Cassie's orbit, and for the first time ever, Molly's cynical twin is a lovesick mess. Meanwhile, Molly's totally not dying of loneliness, except for the part where she is. Luckily, Cassie's new girlfriend comes with a cute hipster boy sidekick. Will is funny and flirtatious and just might be the perfect crush material. Maybe more than crush material. And if Molly can win him over, she'll get her first kiss and she'll get her twin back. There's only one problem. Molly's co-worker, Reed. He's an awkward Tolkien superfan and a season pass to the Ren Fair, and there's absolutely no way Molly could fall for him, right? Again, very cute, lighthearted little book. Um, really liked it. The next book is called Running with Lions by Julian Winters, and the summary is, Bloomington High School Lions star goalie Sebastian Hughes should be excited about his senior year. His teammates are amazing, and he's got a coach who doesn't ask anyone to hide their sexuality. But when his estranged childhood best friend Amir Shaw shows up to summer training camp, Sebastian realizes the team's success may end up in the hands of the one guy who hates him. Determined to reconnect with Amir for the sake of the Lions, he sets out to regain Amir's trust. But to Sebastian's surprise, sweaty days on the pitch, wandering the town streets, and bonding on the weekends sparks more than just a friendship between them. This book is really, really cute. I read it because it was recommended by Becky Albertalli, and as you can see by the amount of her books that are on this list, I love her style of writing and her stories that she tells, so I decided to give this one a shot, and it was really, really good and cute as well. The last two books that I'm going to share with you I actually haven't read, but I've been recommended them many, many times by some of you and by other people, so I thought I would throw them on here because they're obviously very well esteemed. People like them. <laughs> so the next one is called Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. And the description is, First son, Alex Claremont Diaz, is the closest thing to a prince this side of the Atlantic. With his intrepid sister and the Veep's genius granddaughter, they're the White House trio. A beautiful millennial marketing strategy for his mother, President Ellen Claremont. International socialite duties do have downsides, namely, when photos of a confrontation with his longtime nemesis, Prince Henry, at a royal wedding leaked to the tabloids and threaten American 
British relations. The plan for damage control is staging a fake friendship between the first son and the prince. As President Claremont kicked off her re-election bid, Alex finds himself hurtling into a secret relationship with Henry that could derail the campaign and upend two nations. What is worth the sacrifice? How do you do all the good you can do? And most importantly, how will history remember you? That sounds very good, and I definitely want to read that book. I've heard such good things about it, so I would definitely recommend that one as well. The final book on the list is another one by Adam Silvera called History Is All You Left Me, and the description is, When Griffin's first love and ex-boyfriend Theo dies in a drowning accident, his universe implodes. Even though Theo had moved to California for college and started seeing Jackson, Griffin never doubted Theo would come back to him when the time was right. But now the future he's been imagining for himself has gone far off course. To make things worse, the only person who truly understands his heartache is Jackson, but no matter how much they open up to each other, Griffin's downward spiral continues. He's losing himself in his obsessive compulsions and destructive choices, and the secrets he's been keeping are tearing him apart. If Griffin is ever to rebuild his future, he must first confront his history, every last heartbreaking piece in the puzzle of his life. Alright, so those are all of the book suggestions that I have for you today. I'm realizing after reading all those descriptions that these are all sort of young adult type books, which is fine and great, and they're all great books, but I would like to incorporate more actual adult books into my reading adult LGBTQ plus books. So if you have any suggestions, definitely leave those down below, or just LGBTQ plus books in general, because I'm always looking to expand my reading and I love LGBTQ plus books so definitely let me know if you have any suggestions. And as always if you have any other video requests you can go ahead and leave those down below because I like to make videos that you guys want to see. Anyways thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next week for another video. Bye guys!